selected a turf area because a lot of people will plant uh, into grass and first of all uh, you've got to dig a hole which is at least uh, five to ten centimeters uh, wider than the pot or all, all the way around to give uh, plenty of room and the turf has got to come off first this is uh, important because grass takes a lot of energy from trees so when we get to this stage we're just going to leave a nice bit of crumb in the bottom of the hole there it's very important that uh, you water the pot of, of the tree the, the root ball first thoroughly before you actually put it in the hole so uh, it needs a really good soaking you can never use too much you will see here on this particular tree a lovely healthy root system the roots need to be a little bit pulled out and even to knock off a, a bit of the compost onto the soil just to free a little bit more of the root now if we place it in the holes we want about an inch of soil over the top after planting to retain help to retain moisture but before we do this the next step is to put a stake in the ground Um, we're going to stick it in the hole on the edge of the hole and it's very important that you know where the prevailing winds are. So if it's westerly and that is west behind us then the tree will usually be blown away from the stake on most days which will stop rubbing. This tree is now ready so we're going to pop it in there. Now the, the gap between the tree and the stake is quite important, uh, two or three inches, maybe about 10 centimetres, and the tree can lean towards the top of the stake. We're actually going to uh, put the tie in uh, at, this, at this height here. Now before we uh, tie the tree, and before we put soil back in around the roots, uh, we're going to recommend a couple of things. First of all, if you have uh, heavy soil, um, clay-based, break it up as finely as possible, um, and then with very heavy soils, uh, some compost added to the top and uh, you just put a light covering like that on there and on the, obviously on the other side as well, on, onto the top. That's number one. And then the next important thing is a little bit of extra fertiliser. Now we've got several things. Um, bone meal is everybody's favourite and it's a good additive, it uh, provides slow release uh, uh, fertilizers, it's, uh, it's a very natural product. If you take one whole handful per tree, like so, that is probably adequate. And then for something that's uh, a little bit more sophisticated these days, and you, you may well have heard about mycorrhizas, these are all little um, good, good bacteria which uh, help to convert uh, fertilizers in, in for the tree so they can absorb uh, the nutrients much better. Now mycorrhizas uh, work very well um, and this one here tree boost which uh, we recommend make sure you use it all and then we're ready for planting back into uh, the hole. The one thing to remember is that after a few months the soil will settle so it may be necessary to bring a little bit of extra soil in just to make sure that the, uh, the, the uh, ground is level. Leave it crumbly on top. This allows the rain to go in much easier. If you were to uh, press it with your feet, um, at the last thing you do, it tends to allow the water to pour. So you give it a good one full can, watering can of water, absolutely soaked in so it all uh, fills up all the spaces and the water settles around it and you would probably do one of those every two weeks uh, for the first uh, two months and then after that it would probably be okay. Now after watering we need to uh, think about mulching. Mulching will reduce the watering, stops evaporation. Uh, try and avoid uh, grass clippings uh, because they tend to um, be uh, anaerobic and that means that they'll take more goodness away from the soil rather than putting into it. So if you use an organic mulch and if we at the moment accepted 
this compost as the marsh material and we put a good a good couple of inches on the top all around the tree and that will hold in the moisture uh, that's uh, very important for the tree's survival. We're going to put a, a, a tie on the tree. Um, lots of different ties uh, are possible. Uh, the more you spend the better the tie, the longer it will last and the kinder it will be on the tree. These are soft rubber ties, uh, they're very nice, they're adjustable. So if we just tuck that back in and that, that's good. Now to stop the tie dropping down we do need to put a nail and, and if you remember not to drive the nail in fully and that at any time it's easy to remove uh, and adjust. If you wanted to start down here with a smaller tree and you could use the tie and move it up over a couple of years. So always leave a little bit to spare but that will stop the tie dropping down the, the post. The other thing we have to uh, think about and this is very important is uh, the damage uh, that rabbits can do to trees. Uh, they are extremely hungry in the winter with very little to eat and they won't touch in the summer so you've got to remember in the autumn to come back and uh, put on a, a, um, a guard if not straight away. Uh, these spiral guards are very very inexpensive and if you put these on you can actually do that quite quickly and that will probably be adequate. Okay this is the Rolls-Royce job uh, using chicken wire because uh, rabbits definitely can't get through that uh, and it lasts for many many years. You put it between uh, the tree and the post, bring that round and you'll see that we've cut out uh, two or three bits of the wire there and then all you do is to push that round on the top. Okay, now the other tree we're going to show you how to plant uh, is the bare root tree. Uh, this uh, can be planted any time from mid-November, early to November through to, to March. And the first thing to do would be to actually soak it. This is a good idea because it, it helps to recharge the tree. It will even absorb moisture, water during the, the winter if you put it in a tub. And particularly if it's dry, and one of the tricks is to chop the roots off at the ends with fresh cuts. This doesn't do the tree any harm at all. In fact, if anything, it's probably better. But by making these cuts and by putting the tree uh, into a tub of water or anything, a uh, tank or anything that you might have, big, a large bucket, um, and leave it for an hour, two hours, uh, and that will begin to soak up a little bit of water, recharge the cells of the tree, so when it goes into the ground, it'll be a, a lot more comfortable. Anyway, this tree has had a lot of moisture, so we can take that out straight away. So we pop that in, and again, with uh, level, we want to be able to keep the union of the tree between uh, the, the root system and the variety, and this applies to fruit trees mostly, but it also with ornamental trees, you'll see that most trees are grafted or budded, and that wants to remain a couple of inches uh, above the soil after, after planting. Okay, it's particularly important with bare root trees that we do some pruning immediately after planting. The reason being that when a tree is lifted from the nursery and its roots are cut, that we balance the tree by removing some of the branches or parts of them uh, to help the tree to uh, have enough energy to make it establish in the first year. So we're going to reduce uh, a little bit and I would recommend that all last year's extension growth in the nursery is cut back by half. So that we would cut to a bud and so on. So that's the main leader. Uh, the other branches would be cut a little bit lower down, again uh, half, removing half of the branches. And this balances the tree nicely. It also means that it will be uh, have less wind rock, so there's less of head of the tree in the first year to catch the wind, so it will be more stable. 
um, and there's another good reason as well um, particularly with fruit trees is if you cut branches back you will initiate fruit buds here in the remaining part of the branch it will actually encourage uh, a very good fruit bud development now you can sit back and enjoy your tree in your garden or orchard look out for the trees for life range in garden centers throughout the country these trees have been grown right here in the team valley using traditional nursery skills to the highest standards trees for life stands for quality and range trees for every space and every season